Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I am Fiona Beal and I am hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Megan Rodemeyer, who runs this project for SchoolNet and Microsoft. Megan will be speaking to us in two sessions, telling us about some of the projects that have been entered in the past. Over to you, Megan. Um, hi everyone, this is Megan Rademeyer. Can everyone hear me? Um, you're going to have to type that you can in the little chat box because I obviously can't hear you. Um, I see that there's a question from the other Megan and she's asking um, if, if you have to make use of um, Microsoft apps. Um, you, you don't. Um, although this competition is sponsored by Microsoft and if there is a Microsoft version of something they, they do love to see it, um, you're by no means limited um, to Microsoft software only. If you've got a great idea that uses an iPad or if you've um, used Google um, apps in some exciting way, then, then please do still enter your project. Um, we, we really would love to see um, what you're doing. Um, okay, um, I see that Fiona's got my presentation um, loaded up here. So I'm going to um, spout forth. Um, this is very odd, um, sort of staring into my computer screen and um, chatting to people that are, I have a sense are out there, but um, I can't see or hear from. Um, if there are any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat box and I'll keep an eye on it and I'll try to answer them. And that way I can also see that somebody's still out there, which is also nice. Um, Fiona, I'm not sure how I put the next slide on. Um, ah, I hit the play button. Let me see if that works. Oh, there we go. Got it. Um, right. Um, my first picture. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, let's go back. Um, right. And now I want to play. And now... Um, that option of pausing it has has disappeared. Um, okay, let me let me. Oh, it's back. Okay. Um, the picture that you see on your screen now is the 2011 Innovative Teachers. Um, just when we got teachers all around the country knowing what the Microsoft um, Innovative Teachers competition was all about, they went and changed the name to the Microsoft Partners in Learning Forum. But it's the same thing, um, the same great opportunity for teachers to enter their projects that use technology in an exciting way. Um, and we really hope that teachers will um, consider entering this year. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about the Partners in Learning Forum, and I don't think that the surprise to anyone watching this because you've obviously looked at Fiona's lovely wiki, um, but the Partners in Learning Forum is an opportunity for teachers to share what they're doing um, and to promote the use of technology in engaging ways um, in teaching. Um, they're fantastic prizes up for grabs. Um, in the pictures here, um, you can see Natalie, one of our winners from last year, getting her brand new Dell laptop. Um, there also um, there's a smart board up for grabs. But I think the best price, um, the best prize of the lot, is the opportunity to go to um, the regional and possibly the global um, forum. Um, I see in the, in the chat box that Linda's saying it's so early this year. Um, yes, Linda, we, we know, um, and it, it really is a problem, um, but unfortunately there's not much we can do about it. Um, the regional event has been moved earlier this year, um, so everything else has had to move early. Um, so that's part of the problem. And the second part of the problem is that um, this year the finals event is taking place um, as part of the South African Basic Education Conference, um, which is the first week in April. And as part of the finalists' prize, they will get to attend this conference um, at the Durban ICC. So that was the other reason um, why it had to be bought early. Um, to try and make up for this, um, we're obviously welcome to accepting um, projects that teachers worked on last year um, and are now entering this year. That's perfectly acceptable. And also, as was discussed in the in the chat box earlier, 
if a teacher has started a project and they've done a couple of the activities but they haven't yet finished the project, they're still welcome to enter it as it stands and then between the time that they enter and the time that they present, if they select it as a South African finalist, they'll have a couple more weeks to work on it and if they then select it to go to the regional level, um, they'll have another month or two to carry on with their project and can obviously um, present that version then. So um, I know it's, um, it's tight deadlines, but that's um, how we're trying to mitigate it. Um, on with the, the presentation, the, the big reward um, over and above the, the laptop and um, the smart board, I really think that the most wonderful thing about the Partners in Learning forums is the opportunity to connect with other like-minded individuals. Um, seeing what 19 other fantastic teachers have been up to and sharing ideas and networking, um, I think is the real prize. And I'm sure um, Linda and Peter and Lisa um, will tell you that they're still in touch with many of the finalists that they met at the, their forum and have since been able to um, sort of do collaborative projects with those other teachers. And that's the big prize. Um, to um, move on to the next slide, um, there, there are a number of different categories um, in the Partners in um, Learning Forum. Um, but teachers don't need to worry about um, about sticking um, only to um, to one of these categories. In fact, the the very best um, project will um, sort of have aspects of all of these um, these categories in the project. Um, and in fact, the teachers don't need to um, don't need to even put their entry in a specific category. The judges will look at the entries and will say this one fits best in collaboration or this one fits best in knowledge building. Um, also, um, for our South African um, competition, the, the best projects overall are the ones that go to the regional level. Um, and the reason why we do this is in one year we may have lots of people that enter um, projects that are great examples of collaboration, but we might get very few entries that are good examples of cutting edge use of technology. So a project that's quite weak may win the cutting edge use of technology prize, um, but might not be one of the best projects overall. So that's why for the South African Forum, the best projects overall um, get to go to the regional event. Um, I know that time is ticking, but I also know that Fiona's recording this um, and that people watching the recording might be interested in what previous winners have done. So I'm going to go through these um, quite quickly. Um, lots of people at the innovation workshops or people who write in to Fiona or to myself say, oh, they'd love to do something, but you know, where do they start? Where do they get an idea from? And sometimes the best place to get an idea is to um, consider very briefly um, other projects that um, other teachers have entered in the past. Um, obviously, um, you're not going to score great points for sort of merely imitating um, a previous entry, but just getting a, an essence or an idea or um, seeing an example of how a tool is being used in a clever way um, may inspire teachers to come up with a, an entry of their own. So um, this is one of the projects that was um, selected to go to the regional level last year. Um, this was Ryan Galvin's project and it was called R&J and R&B, which is um, a sort of clever way of saying um, Romeo and Juliet um, in rhythm and blues. Um, and what Ryan did in his project um, was he got the learners to use um, Twitter in a very clever way um, to sort of summarize um, Romeo and Juliet, to collaborate amongst themselves, um, and to see does the play um, of Romeo and Juliet still sort of resonate with a modern day audience. Um, and through taking something um, that, that learners often think is quite dull, um, like Shakespeare, and giving them an opportunity to talk about it using Twitter, which is something um, that teenagers think is very sort of hip and hop and happening, um, really brought Shakespeare to life. Also, having to condense um, 
sort of quite a lot of information into a short 180 character tweet, you really need to know your stuff um, to, to sort of condense it down and to, to summarize it. Um, and, and Ryan was able to get his learners to do this. Um, the next project um, that I'll talk about very briefly is Vessel to Ron's um, School of Rock project. Um, Vessel teaches Afrikaans as a second language um, to a group of learners um, who Vessel is the first to admit are, are sort of the bottom stream. They, they're not the, um, the whiz kids of the Afrikaans class. Um, they, they don't enjoy the subject. They don't do particularly well in it um, and are generally quite reluctant um, you know, to get themselves to the Afrikaans class. But when Vessel presented them with an opportunity um, to create a music video um, that showed that they understood an Afrikaans um, sort of pop song, um, he really made Afrikaans come alive. Um, and if you watch the videos that these learners have created, there's no way that they could have made such great music videos if they didn't really understand um, the essence of the songs um, that were playing. Um, if learners didn't want to make their own music video to go along with an Afrikaans song, um, the second option that Vessel gave them was to make a, um, a, an Afrikaans translation of an English pop song. And if you hear um, Vessel's learners on YouTube singing their version of Justin Bieber's um, Baby Baby, you will see just how much fun um, they were able to have whilst learning Afrikaans at the same time. Um, Vessel made great use of YouTube, of iTunes, um, which are things that his learners access and enjoy using. Um, and he used those tools um, to make a subject that they normally see as being quite dull, um, sort of really exciting. And I think that's why this, this project was such a great one. Um, Darlene's project um, was done with a, a group of special needs learners. And the reason why I'm highlighting it here is to show that this um, forum is really open to teachers um, in, whatever, um, in whatever type of school they teach at, um, to whatever grade. Um, you've already seen Linda's project that she did with um, six-year-olds, grade ones. Um, Peter's project was done with high school learners and is far more advanced um, in keeping with the, the much greater abilities of high school learners. And this project of Darlene's shows that even um, special needs learners are able to use ICT in, in a fun and exciting way. Um, Darlene um, managed to create her own series of readers um, using ICT um, that use the, the very simple words that her learners are able to read, um, but to create a, um, a sort of unique um, reading series for them. And when, when you hear Darlene talk about how um, when learners got to use the computers, um, you know, got to access um, their, their readers and work their way through them, um, how excited and motivated they were to read. I think that's the, the, the essence of, um, of Dalian's project and what made it so special. Um, I've also got a few slides here of winners from the, the 2010 um, Innovative Teacher Forum. And I've included them here um, just to give a few more ideas. Um, this one was Warren Sparrow's project and it was called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, Warren Sparrow is the computer studies teacher at Rhonda Bosch Boys. Um, and in this project, um, learners had to um, do a, a sort of series of lessons on entrepreneurship for the um, EMS lessons. And to bring them to life, um, Warren got the learners to um, develop their own board game. Um, that showed that they had a knowledge of the, the content um, and that they were able to sort of, um, I don't know, jig this content into an exciting um, board game. That was Megan Rademeyer from Schoolnet. Thank you very much, Megan. We look forward to part two of your